All right, folks, welcome back. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factory. Thank you for tuning in today. This one is going to be a good one. Smash that like button as we get started. Subscribe if you are brand new. And let's pick up from where we left off last. So we've been talking about GitHub Actions the past few episodes. We've been building out a way to actually lint particular uh, you know, variants, in this case, our debug variant. We have everything hooked up to GitHub Actions. If you've missed any of it, I'd recommend going back and watching the first few so that you're all caught up to speed. And today we're going to go ahead and uh, duplicate this, this operation here where we're linting the code base. We're then going to run tests on the code base, and then we are going to ultimately combine all of them together so that when you open a PR, these things run automatically, right? We've been dealing with the on workflow dispatch lately, uh, which allows us to run the workflows from the GitHub UI through this little option right down here. You can go ahead and run the workflow. We are now going to actually get in to the automated part of things here. So buckle in, grab some popcorn. I'm gonna create a new file here. We're gonna call it testdebug.yml. Of course, we'll add it to our uh, get tracking. We are going to copy all of this. We are going to paste all of this. We're going to change something here. Uh, it's not going to be lint debug. It's going to be test debug. Let's say testing our debug variant. Again, we have our workflow dispatch. Then we have our Ubuntu latest. We're going to have to go through all this stuff again, right? We're going to have to check out our code base. We're going to have to set up Java. We're going to have to set up Gradle. We're going to have to you know, fix that little issue we ran into last time, making it executable. And then instead of um, uh, running lint, we are going to run the test debug unit test, which is, there we go, we can quickly change that up. If we see over here on the Gradle action side, we can go ahead and see the unit test uh, you know, operation here that we're going to go ahead and do. We can go ahead and double click that and we will see here that it actually runs our test here uh, specifically, right? This is just a sample project. So we only have this unit test here and it is running this, right? So we're expecting four plus uh, two plus two equals four. We go ahead and change this to five and we rerun our debug unit test. We now see that our tests have now failed. So if you're writing tests inside your code base, you wanna make sure that you're doing everything up to standard here, go ahead and take it a step further. Make sure you have CI running all the time, specifically on any time a PR is opened because you've changed the code base, right? You really want your test to run on that new version of the code, not necessarily you know anything else before you merge it in so that you understand, hey, this is safe to merge in. So we're gonna go ahead and just change this back to four. We can go ahead and rerun things and we will see that everything starts to work again. So that is perfect here. And and uh, quite simply, th th this file is ready to go. We can go ahead and push this up and we can go ahead and run this. But like I said, we're gonna take this a step further, right? So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna go ahead and create a new file. Hmm. Let's call this, I don't know, operation debug test and lint.yaml. Yes, we will go ahead and add to our GitHub <clears throat> to Git, excuse me. But the concept here is that if we take a look at the way these are designed, right, this is one particular job that is just going to lint our debug variant. This is one particular job that is just going to test our debug variant. Now we can go ahead and put these little Lego blocks together that we've made into one larger operation that actually, you know, leverages those two jobs that we've already built out. We're gonna go ahead and give our uh, file here, our workflow, a name. We're gonna name this on pull request opened. With that, we are going to update our on. We're going to name, we're going to use this pull request option. So we're saying on a particular pull request. And then we are going to specify the branches that we care for. In this case, all we care about is main, our main branch. Then as we know, every single uh, workflow file needs the jobs kind of you know pillar, so to speak. Um, and then we can go ahead and actually explain what is going on here. So we're going to say this first job is just gonna be called lint. We can give it a name. We're just gonna say lint debug, make it more, more descriptive and go lint debug variant. And then we're gonna go ahead and use use a new um, you know uh, operation here called uses and then we can actually specify a particular file that we want to actually use so we're going to go ahead and draw the path to that file and just like that we now have uh, one master file so to speak that actually has other jobs inside of it basically allowing us to reuse workflows that we've already built out 
much like how you do the same with code, you have some reusability, you can do the exact same thing here. And this is why, you know, when you build things out in small segments, small, you know, good separation of concerns, you can then kind of piece these little pieces together in whatever, you know, fashion that you care for to come up with whatever functionality you actually need. So then we're going to go ahead and call another job here called test. Uh, and then we're going to say test debug variant. And then we're going to do, I'm just going to copy and paste this because we just need to change one little bit. Uh, instead of lint, it is test debug. Perfect. One last thing I want to call out here before we go ahead and make some final tweaks and see this in action. This is the first time that inside of our jobs section, we now have two different jobs, right? We have the lint and we have the tests job. Uh, both of these are actually going to be running in parallel because uh, we've just they're just defined as such. We can actually update one of these if we cared to. Let me just put it after the name. We could say something like needs lint here, and that would actually halt this job so that it would not run until this one is done, and it would also not run unless this lint job finished successfully. So this is going to be super powerful when you have sequential things, you know, you got to do A before B. In this case, we can run both of them independent of one another, which actually just makes our overall operation more efficient, right? Because if each one took two and a half minutes, this job is going to run in two and a half minutes, not five minutes, because we were waiting, you know, for the first two and a half minutes to start the second two and a half. So that's the last little bit I wanted to mention there. We want to run these in parallel. If you need things that need to run sequentially, you can very easily do that with simply just that needs keyword. All right, with that out of the way, there is one more bit of information that we need to change here. And instead of referencing workflow dispatch here, we actually need to change this to, uh, sorry, workflow call. And that allows this workflow to actually be called by a different workflow. So this comment is no longer irrelevant. Um, and by removing the workflow dispatch, we now no longer can run the test debug job from the GitHub Actions tab in GitHub. We're going to go ahead and just change that over. We don't need this one either. So now both of these jobs that we actually needed are now just going to go ahead and get that little bit of extra information. And now we can simply just call them like that, which is just super amazing. So we're going to go ahead and commit and push this information. This is now on main. If we flip back over here to our um, you know, our GitHub actions overall, you know, uh, I don't know, kind of hub here, we'll now see the different actions here. So we have lint debug, we have test debug on pull request open. So now this is inside of the main branch, everything is all good here. And let's go ahead and actually see this in action. So we're going to go ahead and create a new branch here, we are just going to call this uh, dom test, let's say failing. And, you know, imagine you just do whatever work you want to do. In our case, we are just going to simply make this test fail, right? We're actually going to just going to assume that this code has is totally fine. And we can just go ahead and commit it. We're not really going to test it out. We're going to actually see the action tell us, hey, hey, hey something happened. What's going on here? Updated tests as our commit message. We will go ahead and commit and push this information. Wonderful. Now let's bounce over to our pull request tab. We see this information up here. Uh, yeah, we'll just leave it as updated tests. Of course, it's able to merge. We will then create our pull request. We have no problems. There we go. There it is in real time. This updated. We have no problems merging in. But now we can see the on pull request opened the lint debug variant, the test debug variant. All of this work is now actually running. Right, so you can see this attached to the PR. More importantly, if you go to the Actions tab, you can actually see when one of these workflows has been triggered. Now, if you actually see here as well, both of these jobs are running in parallel. This is the linting job, this is the testing job, and I believe the lint job will just run totally fine, and we will see the test job fail at some point. You go ahead and click into it. You can actually see any of the you know, operations that are going on. You can see from this side here, the variety of different jobs that you have. We can go ahead and see we're running the test debug unit test. So we're trying to run those unit tests again, and we are eventually going to fail. Oh, perfect. Our lint ran just fine as we would expect. And let's just hang tight and see, otherwise I'll jump cut here. Let's see our tests fail. 
Perfect, there we go, All right? We have the testing failed here. We can even click into it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, example unit test, addition is correct, failed. Uh, example unit test KT line 15 and boom line 15 is failing so just like that we can actually get uh, you know actions running on PR opens but more importantly now when you look at the PR at this level you can actually see this nice little red X it says one of two checks have passed and now you know you get this more detailed view here that says, okay, you know, the, the, the testing fail, that's probably an issue. At this point, someone would comment on it or you would not really merge this in because obviously you don't want to break the uh, main branch here. And that is basically about it here. Um, you know, I think the, the really, really interesting part here is just how simple it is to get things running, right? This is kind of the key here on pull request branches main. And then we go ahead and run this information. We run them in parallel because we care about optimization. And now at this point you know you you have you're running tests on things that are um or, or you're running automation on things at the right time so that you're giving the right visibility and like hey is this is this going to break anything or not or is this a problem whatever the case is we can take this a step further we can react to different things uh that happen either different branches uh, a tag being pushed whatever whatever you want right we can actually do some pretty cool things around releasing deploying builds all that good stuff so uh, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate a like. I hope you learned something new. If you did, let me know, you know your thoughts down in the comments below. This is actually a pretty critical thing once you start working inside of a team. I hope it was helpful. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.